And there's 27 pounds in weight between them. Chris Mandela was 257 pounds at the weigh-in yesterday. Dakers a career heaviest of 230, but he's been doing his strength and conditioning. And at six foot five, starting now, Darren to to look like a fully fledged heavyweight. And uh, well, not an ounce of fat on him, but really filling out into the weight too, isn't he? He is, and uh, that. Last performance against Sokolowski proved just that. He was physically strong when I thought he may get bullied in that contest. But I was never in doubt that he would win the contest, but I thought Sokolowski would be pushing him back and trying to rough him up a little bit. But he didn't allow that. And I think that's he's just filling out more. He's confident, well scored, very, very accurate with his shots, quick for a heavyweight. Vespin Dolo, he's, uh, he's solid, he's tough. He's not afraid to let his hands go, especially with the right hand, really does loop it in. And the, the issue here, Chris, may be similar to our opening contest. It may be the lack of hand speed from Espandola that will be his undoing here. That was a nice short right to the body from Espandola. Thank you, just loading up with that. Uh right hand looking to put a dent in his man early eight rounds to to do it remember but he'll know too as i mentioned on the the ring walks the the durability of the man in front of him because ivan ditchko was he had a reputation as being heavy-handed at the top end of the amateur international circuit it's been around for a long time ditchko since the back end of the anthony joshua days through to the years of joe joyce fraser clark i think all three of them have boxed him at, at some point so an amount of that quality couldn't get him out there in 10 rounds. Dakers will know that he's going to take some softening up and it will take an intelligent uh, approach to do so. Just a uh, left hook from Espindola. As I mentioned, hand speed, pretty good for a small compact man. Can kind of suddenly just burst out, cover the ground pretty quickly and let his hands go. And he has got good finishing instincts as well. It's a nice combination finishing on the jab there from Dakers. Just centre inch, shovels a left hand in off the jab. Yeah, it was good work off that lead left hand I think I've spotted a shot that would work for Dakers I think it's the the uppercut you can see Espindola crouching down you see him trying to target the body shots as he does there so when he's crouching down or bending the knees they can to set that lovely sharp right uppercut but Espindola lands a left hook yeah Dakers just lifted up a little bit tall there Stayed uh, in front of his man at just a fraction too long, and that's all it takes. And at this weight, well, 258 pounds, 57 pounds in front of you. Everybody can whack. Baker's sharp right hand there, turn right through it to put a punctuation on a composed opening round. And it must be a good feeling if you've been training, as he said he has done, for over 18 months with a shoulder injury he's just not been able to deal with the compound stress that you put your body through day in day out as part of being a professional boxer but he says that is now behind him and that will that will elevate his training to a different level too yeah absolutely being able to, to do exactly what is required in the gym is so important uh, but you see there the nice quick hands picking the shots really well touched on touched on it in the first round there he's a very accurate sharp heavyweight Vespin Dola never looked troubled at all, was letting his hands go, he was targeting the body with the straight shots. So he's in a fight, Dakers, but I think the uppercut, certainly the shot for Espen Dola where he's shorter, he's crouching down and always looking to throw those straight shots, like I say to the body, but you see there, he's crafty, he knows how to take the sting out of shots. Often seen Richie Woodall working on that with the, uh, the lads up at GB on the pads, just getting them to drop their hands and, and used to that really loose feeling of turning through the shoulders. It looked just like that at the end of that round when he just punched through Espindola with that one, two. Espindola just trying to feint Dakers back, give himself a little bit of space and look for openings of his own. Quite a smooth, calm rhythm, the Argentinian. And he is looking for dangerous shots of his own. This is what Dakers needs, just to know that there's danger in front of him and, and stuff coming back as double jab just comes off the arms and then one lands to the body. He gives you a bit of a false sense of security, Espindola. Doesn't really do much for a little while, then all of a sudden he'll loop in a big right hand or he'll throw a couple of shots to the body. You just see him moving. He's just picking his moments. Turns well on the ropes yeah. as well, just keeps the shoulders moving. Dakers 
Sorry, Chris looking very composed, relaxed, and you can see sometimes he pokes out some arm shots, and that's almost like a ploy trying to draw out the lead so he can fire back with a second phase attack. Just using that lead hand to just control the head of, of the Argentinian after he punched that time. Just keep things long after he's landed his own work. This kind of distance, this kind of Baker's contest all night long, just got to be careful if he stays a little bit too long in front of his man, he's going to catch something heavy, one of those wide hooks, solid thumping jab. And he's a squat, compact, strong man, lovely left under the elbow just to the, the liver of Espindola there from Solomon Dakers. You see a bit of everything as well as far as movement's concerned. You see how comfortable he is on the back foot as well as the front foot. He manages the distance so well, really does. Quick feet, like I say, for a heavyweight. Good variation, see the left of the body after the one-two. So relaxed, so smooth, really does get into a rhythm. But like I said in the opening round, Espindola doesn't look phased, doesn't look troubled or bothered at all. So I think that's down to Dakers now to really start going through the gears as the rounds go on. You should, presumably, Darren, as well, you start to go through the gears when you sense the man in front of you has, has just left a little bit out of there that the gears... So you feel someone in front of you fade, that's when you start to, to put your foot down yeah, a little bit. It, it, uh, uh, to some degree, yeah, and sometimes it's down to you to make your opponent tire, and obviously you can do that by working hard and letting your hands go and making your opponent match you for work. Right, that's a good one too. Quick hands again. Really, really sharp. He felt that one, Espindola. Yeah, Espindola hasn't managed to find an exit out of that corner. He's having to dip and roll, try and keep himself safe, and he manages to land something just to get Dakers' attention, and now he gets some himself back out of that corner is he just backing into the next though good finish to the round from Solomon Dakers well he, uh, he said he wants to box for the English title perhaps a little bit later on this year Fabio Wardy who we'll see in action a little bit later on of course looking to go and move up towards the British title we think against Nathan Gorman and, and there he is Fabio Wardley be in action on the main card against uh, Chris Healy the central area heavyweight champion. He's had a nightmare, Fabio Wally, getting opponents the last couple of weeks. Had a couple of dropouts, including we heard uh, a nearly done deal with Carlos Takam, which would have been excellent, but Chris Eady has come in and fair play to him, saved the day on a couple of days' notice. And well, he gave David Adelaide a bit to think about early on in their contest on the Fury White undercard a, a couple of months ago. What kind of shape is he in? Has he been training? <laughs> Wardley is a man that's in really, really good shape, as is Solomon Dakers, and I just wonder if in three or four years' time those two could be meeting perhaps for a world title. This generation of heavyweights is as good as it's been. Joshua Fury, Usyk, White all coming towards their mid-30s now. Deontay Wilder, I think 36 years old, maybe 37. Very, very nearly closed the chapter on a brilliant decade of heavyweight boxing, and the young guns now starting to creep through the likes of Bergovic, Tony Yoka, Justice Hooney, Jared Anderson as well, and, and of course Fabio Wardley here, plenty of, of talent, Daniel Dubois with a good win over Trevor Bryan in the United States two or three weeks ago as well, all to play for for these young guns. Yeah, what a great time to be a young heavyweight. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. They, they generate quite a bit of money as well, don't they, Chris? Yeah, you wish you'd been born a little bit bigger, eh? <laughs> a bit more baby grow in the early years, and maybe. <laughs> Can't imagine you as a, as a big heavyweight. I like you as you are. <laughs> Give me a couple of years. Yeah. My metabolism's slowing down slightly now, I've hit 40. Oh, listen, Kubrat Pulev's got a year on you, and he's still, he's still doing well. Can he uh, be the first man to stop Derek Chisora in quite a while? So it's still in white. As uh, Dakers just firing that right hand to the body, trying to manoeuvre Espindola around. But wow, there's one of those quick bursts and raids. And as he rushed forwards, the heads came together. The referee didn't call break or, or tell them to stop boxing. And so Dakers did the right thing, stepped on him, protect yourselves at all times. And Espindola knew too that he'd been caught out as Dakers now just putting the hands together. Nice combination, body and head. Holding the distance all the time when Espindola's on the on the ropes and just again just slid that right hand counter off the shoulder yeah a little reminder again don't get too confident don't get too cocky but 
He's looking good in this round today because it's the, you see the movement there. Comfortable on the front foot, but as soon as Espandola plants his feet, let's go, let's those hands go. Out goes Dakers, not there. I think it's always uh, apparent when you're watching at home, you, you tend to see the action majority part from, from the waist up. Obviously, watching at ringside, you're seeing the full 360. Dakers, very, very smooth footwork. Not a lot of heavyweights kind of slide in and out the way that nice. he does. And as you mentioned, that, that, that management of, of distance, you can kind of see it here, just the way he isn't smothering his shots. He's seeing things coming back right on cue, just pulls out the way of a, of a left hand. And relaxation and nothing about his demeanor ever looks phased, even when he is caught flush on the odd occasion. And these heavyweights can all punch, but he's got the makings of very, very good young fighter here. And I know he's some way away from his best, and he's still growing into his physical prime, but... All signs early, you're looking at that kind of boxes ticked of what you want to see from young fighters. He's ticking quite a few boxes at this he stage. Is. He is, and you, you look at him and you think, you know, how would these opponents, the, the young crop that you mentioned, fare against Akers? And like you say, he doesn't do an awful lot wrong, and he'd be a very difficult man to beat. I think for me watching him, it would be probably pace you know, tempo to yep. try and beat him because he's a very relaxed, laid-back individual and he sometimes carries that into the ring. But there was a clash of heads, wasn't intentional, just taking his feet out. Oh, yeah, it was an elbow, to... sorry, just yep. sort of trying to manage the distance and, and, and fend off Espindola as he come forward. Nothing illegal about that, didn't mean it, but you see in the variation there, that was lovely, the right to the body followed by the left hook. Got a hard head, Espen. Don't lose any. See the way the right hand just bounced off it. Corners, ten seconds. Max McCracken, who's worked with the the Afi brothers over the years, doing some work with Rob McCracken as well now too, and they've kind of held the fort for Birmingham boxing. Sam Eggington, of course, an honourable mention to to him too. Some some brilliant fights he's been in over the course of his career. But Solomon Dakers himself wants to bring big fight nights back to his home city in Birmingham. He's going to need the right dance partner. Imagine when he gets towards maybe British and, and European level. And he is uh, 18 months to two and a half years away from that kind of level. And of course, he will want to get a move on now. Doesn't want to waste his time with, with journeyman, wants live opposition. Stiff jab there from Espindola. Yeah, I think when you've got the pedigree like Dakers, there is absolutely no point in fighting too many journeymen. Obviously, you've got to learn your trade and adjust and adapt to pro boxing. But like I say, when you've campaigned at the level he has, I think it can be detrimental to, you, to your career, if anything. He'll, he'll want to be in healthy competition, matches, skills, against other top talented fighters but like we touched on that last round an awful lot to like from Dakers I have to say though we've seen a lot of variation and good speed and shot selection like I say I think it's the, the management of distance the control in the space of the ring that's been impressed me so much in his first four fights as a professional Max McCracken in the corner. Not sure if you're picking that up at home too. Just asking Dakers for the looping right hand as Espindola is just stepping across to his left as you see he is there. The blood just above the ear of Espindola. Dakers is just looking for that right hand as the Argentinian's on the turn. He's starting to bring his right foot round a little bit, Dakers, and that's helping him cut the ring down. He's managed to get Espindola into the corner a couple of times, and that's just, like I say, stepping across and pinning his man, trapping him, not allowing him to, to move, as you see here. It's Mandola throwing a right to the body, but looking so relaxed and comfortable and smooth, Dakers. And like I say, you have to take him out of his comfort zone. You have to be busy. You have to work. You can't be loading up because he's got the reactions, as you see there, to avoid shots. So I think it's start low with the body shots, work upstairs, but you've got to be busy. Because at this pace, there's only one winner. Yeah, he did full control here, isn't he? And trying to really put a little bit of spice on these straight long shots as well. 
See that? Just a little bit of blood just starts to trickle down the side of the, the head of, of Espindola. Something that's landed above his left ear. Won't be troubling him at all, but he's just nodded on a couple of occasions in acknowledgement of the good work that Dakers is starting to land and sit down on, but he's a solid lump of a, of a man. Espindola doesn't look deterred by these. And when he puts his shots together, springs out of range. A lot of power he's generating from the legs up and uh, just keeping Dakers honest and mindful of what's coming back at him, even though he is in full control through these first four or five rounds. Yeah, head was low. Looked, look, looking a, a little sorry for himself, Espindola. You can see him in the corner. We're just saying Dakers at the minute, but Espindola in the corner. Trying to, the trainer's trying to get him going, but it's, I think it's more frustration, if I'm honest, Chris. I can't quite see what caused that cut. Was it a clash of heads or was it another elbow? Not too sure what caused it. I don't think it's going to cause him any trouble whatsoever. But again, I think that was the best round for Day because they've been having it his own way, but it was very smooth, relaxed. I'm trying to see if there was anything there, maybe a slight clash of heads. Yeah, apparently we're hearing it was a, a head clash in in and amongst it when he was uh, rushing forwards with Dakers, but thankfully not in a place that's going to impede his, his vision or cause him any problems. And again, back to usual proceedings as Dakers is pressing the man in front of him back onto the ropes. He, he just moves off for a second, then goes and takes refuge there. Once again, defensively, he's pretty good. He takes he and rides most of the shots, yeah. and he obviously trusts in, in his chin. He picks his moments to, to come back in these bursts and raids, unfortunately. When he has caught Dakers clean, hasn't really seemed to have affected him too much, if at all. Mm. I like the intent in this round, Chris. It's exactly what I wanted to see from Dakers. He's having it his own way. I'm not sure if he's got a glimpse of Espendola in the corner there, looking a bit dejected and feeling sorry for himself. Now it's down to you to get going. Let them shots go. We've seen everything so far. It's been very impressive, but go through the gears. We're seeing that at the start of this fifth round. So be interesting to see how Espendola deals with this and if he can have any response at all for Dakers. Stiff jab again, just pushes the Argentinian back. Espendola just threatened to step into range. Nice right hand just under the left elbow of Dakers around the flank, but Birmingham fighter just responds well, three-punch combination, just letting those hands hang low. A turn through something long and loose and rangy. He's trying to get that lead of Espindola out so he can fight back with the right hand over the top with the left hook. Yeah, just trying to draw him out. He is. And Espindola, I think he wants to fight, but he's also smart. You can tell he knows that if he overcommits, the, the danger that will lay in front of him getting caught clean. It's when he can sit back and anticipate the shots coming at him. He can ride them, take the sting out of them, muffle the impact on the gloves, rely on that solid, thick neck, good chin. As Dakers inches into range, just pulls out the way again of a, of a right hand. That was exactly, Chris, you know, I've been calling for the uppercut. The right yeah, that's where you throw when you, you've got Espindola falling over that front foot. Extremely vulnerable for that shot coming up. This is good work again from Dakers, two to the body. Putting his foot on the gas. Yeah, hard shots to the body as well. I mean, Thumps one in there to the solar plexus again with a jab, right hand lead. It's very easy when you're in cru cruise control just to continue doing what you're doing. You know, this sport can get very difficult. So if you're, if you're winning easy, just keep it going and sometimes fight, especially with fighters that have that laid back personality that Dakers does not to go through the gears but you're seeing it here in this this round he's really gone through the gears a little more and it's been impressive it's a little counter left hook as Espindola ventured towards the center ring at the end of the round all right he's in full control Solomon Dakers and as I mentioned at the start of this contest, his plan is to try and get some rounds in and, and become a well-rounded 12-round fighter over the, the championship distance. And 
Uh, this is the way you do it. Getting opponents in who give you a little bit of something to think about. Of course, he is having his own way, but he's 4-0. Oh. He's kind of supposed to at this stage of his yeah, career. But, uh, if I'm honest, he's doing everything that's asked of him. You know, he, he's, he's putting his foot on the gas, like I say. He's letting his hands go. He, he's working all sorts of shots. He's moving. He, he's taking a step out. It's, it, you know, it's impressive. Well, I suppose you can expect fireworks of a, a different sort a little bit later on live from the O2 arena on the zone around the world Derek Chisora and Kubrat Pulev rematch six years after they originally met for the European title Pulev victorious on points that night Derek Chisora has been a well, different animal in recent years but just shades and signs in the second Parker fight that perhaps his punch resistance is waning Parker let him off perhaps early on a couple of occasions in that contest and it turned into a real slugfest. Will Pulev let him off if he has a big moment early in this contest later on tonight? Find out at about half past ten local time here in London, live on the zone. Back to the action here, six of eight rounds underway between Solomon Dakers. And he's back to the screen, just letting his hands go. And Kevin Esmondola just launches a, a speculative left hook and a right hand just round the side there. Yeah, he's just reading the attacks coming back, Baker, didn't he? You can see when Espandola sort of puts his head down or he plants his feet. He knows he's going to throw a shot, just takes his feet out and back he comes again, showing good variation, good hand speed. Starting to let them go again, but every time Espandola comes back at him, he's a heavy sounding shots from our ringside position. They can just touch him, measuring with that jab, trying to look for that right hand, either down the middle or around the side of the guard. As Espindola, that's been his money punch, that whipping, jumping left hook. And he has landed it several times throughout this contest. Dakers, though, has been steadfast and, and in control and had his way in this contest, kept things long. And you have to say, it's been a very clean fight. There hasn't been anything by way of holding, clinching. One accidental clash of, of heads, which has been inconsequential to, to both, really. Apart from that, very clean action through these first six rounds as, again, Dakers backs Espindola into the corner. Yeah, you mentioned there Espindola landed a couple of left hooks and you can see the adjustments that Dakers has made. He just tucked his right hand up and he took that left hand on the glove a few moments ago, just showing us his defensive skills. And, yeah, I remember Tony Sims, my coach, always telling me, don't lean back. But he's quite clever. There's that right uppercut. The shot was called him for. Lands it. Doesn't trouble Espindola, but very accurate, sharp right uppercut. Very pleasing. Yeah, but it was a nice left hook counter from, from Espindola straight off the back of it. After you'd, you'd asked for the uppercut, there it was. And well, he got caught on the counter. And often that's kind of trigger reflex. But it was a uh, nice work landed by both with 30 seconds to go in this sixth round. Baker's on the front foot again, just measuring that. Distance trying to take that half step back with the feet and draw Esmondola onto something. Right hand whip round the side of the guard that time, then to the body. Starting to turn through his shots and he's just sensing the steam of the man in front of him. Starting to dissipate and is he going to go through the gears as a result? Espindola just plods forwards now, parrying those shots, trying to go low and then high and attack. Dakers with something that he won't see coming. But so far, the Birmingham fighter has read most of the attacks from the man in front of him and well the ones he hasn't seen he's taken well and often like to see a, a gut check and a, and a chin check for young prospects and he's, he's had a few in his first two or three fights and even now you see just getting caught tall you can hear the weight of the shots from ringside but his chin looks his chin looks pretty good and do you know what he, he always manages to take the sting out of the shot and this is the shot just i mean it, it just sort of grazes the front of the face Espindola, but that's certainly the shot you can see he's the shorter man and uh, always crouching down you can see that guard is slightly loose so certainly the shot but as you pointed out firing straight back with a left hook but like I just mentioned manages to take this thing out of the shot Mark Seltzer in the corner there applying the Vaseline on every single one of my fights. Yeah, work with some of the very, very best in the world. Is that, was that me? You and some <laughs> of the very best in the world. 
Espindola just turns the, the corner, watches that right hand just slide past the shoulder. Dakers just stepping across him, lands it the second time. He's always got Espindola where he wants him. He's a very physically compact fighter, Espindola, but he's managed with real ease just to put him where he wants, on the ropes, in the corner. And as soon as Espindola, as we just see there, goes to let his hands, let him go, Dakers slides out of range, back to the centre of the ring, starts pushing Espindola back exactly where he wants him. Very, very impressed with the footwork of Dakers. I'll say it once more, very impressive. He's been sparring with uh, Big Joe Joyce this camp, ahead of uh, him steamrolling Christian Hammer last weekend. That was impressive stuff from the current British, European and, and Commonwealth champion. He's been working on the circuit with uh, Simon Ibekwe as well, who's moving well on the amateur circuit, based in uh, Redditch. He was Midlands champion in the amateurs last year. Little foot fame from Dakers, just pushing Espindola back. He's got him in the corner, exactly where he wants him. Espindola starting to show the signs of, of fatigue here. It hasn't been a brutal pace by, by any means, but Dakers has landed heavy leather. He's been consistent. And he's been precise with his work as well, chopping right hand there as Espindola tried to step in with a jab. Like you pointed out, Chris, though, he is cute with his defence. He knows how to, I won't quite call it survive, but certainly, certainly avoid some of these shots that have come his way. Just hasn't let his hands go enough. He started really well throwing shots to the body, but sort of neglected that when you've got someone in front of you like Dakers who does lean back a lot. That target, the body, stays exactly where it is, so you need to start downstairs, work upstairs, but it's just been single shots from Espinola. That's why it's been so easy for Dakers. He only had one shot to avoid. And he is getting fatigued now, Espinola, but the, the left hook is he's still coming back from Dakers and because he is letting his hands go, and of course he's kind of punching down as well. He is a little susceptible to that left hook. Well, opening proceedings on the zone, one of the rising stars, formerly the middleweight division, now of the light middleweight division, Kivan Akiyako making his 154-pound debut. And well, we were waiting to see how he looked on the scales yesterday, and he was dropping uh, another six pounds. He looked very, very well indeed, and well, we saw him a few moments ago just testing out the ring and he looks bullishly strong once again i'm just shaking my head because i, I just can't imagine being a super welterweight and having to fight a jarco yeah. like honestly he, we see what a beast he was at middle and i think as long as he can maintain that strength and that power at super well I, I really mean this i think it'd be such a tough man to beat not just domestically i mean across the you know across the pond as well when well, he wants to become Ireland's first Black Irish world champion Tommy McCarthy still has that ambition as well of course he'll have to recoup and come back after defeat to Chris Bill and Smith and he does want to bring those big knights back to to Belfast Carl Frampton of course has been holding the fort there for so many years and hung them up after a super career last year kind of Jarko with the right dance partner potentially put some bums on seats at the Odyssey it's in the plan for him and his management team at STN Sports and of course for Matchroom as well and Lucas Macic was well we saw how tough he was against Anthony Fowler last time out Fowler big much bigger man than Jarko heavy-handed as well and well, Macic he was hurt on a couple of occasions in that contest went into his shell in the middle rounds and he stayed out the 10-round distance can Jarko become the first man to stop him that will open proceedings on the zone Around about uh, half an hour's time. Right now, Dakers, well, he's got two more minutes to do what he hasn't really been able to do in the last seven, which has put a, a discernible dent in a man yeah. in front of him. And we did suspect that that would be the case, given what 
Ivan Ditchko is unable to do and just what a force he is. Best part of six foot nine, Ditchko. Heavy handed, long levers too. And well, Espindola, fatigued as he is, still showing that he's got a little bit of danger still to give and, and just warning signs for Dakers if he does switch off. That, that, that's been. The, I guess the issue for Dakers is there is has been that one shot that's fired back now and again and he really does let it go Espindola with real force and, and, and power and that's kind of stopped Dakers from really mounting a, a sustained attack. I've been impressed with Dakers here, uh, the way he's managed the distance like I've said time and time again, the shot selection etc. The, the only thing I could, if I was to be or pick up on something is it's gone really quiet in the O2 right now and I think as a heavyweight you want to really excite the crowd etc and look I, I am being harsh here but against a different opponent that didn't fire back a, a really big right hand now and again he probably would get the stoppage but I think it's just really being spiteful sitting down on those shots a little bit more and trying to get the, the stoppage but other than that and I'm not even saying that's a negative, really. I've been impressed with what I've seen from Baker. There's an awful, awful lot to like. And you see him now trying to do exactly what I've been asking for. Just let those shots go in fours and fives and go again. That was a nice one-two, starting with the, the rear hand. Well, as I said, it's exactly what I'm asking for. But then, as you see, Espindola always firing back with one. Well, he's got a, a rock for a head, Espindola, because, as you said, Dakers is really sat down on these shots in this last minute and his conditioning has not been in question whatsoever there's the 10 second clap but to cap off a really good eight rounds on the return of the birmingham fighter after getting that shoulder injury sorted out he's back to winning ways and right well, spindola knows he's he's earned his money here not bows his head ivan Ditchko and solomon dakers in 14 days and some travel from south america to London as well fair play to him and he just puts his hand aloft and well he's earned the he's earned the week off after that I think yeah that's for sure and he was crafty he uh, he just knew how to nullify the threat and stop Dakers from working it was just looping in that right hand now and again just to break up the rhythm of, of Dakers who Let's get it right. We're looking very smooth, confident, and relaxed. And to be honest, I think that's a very, very good. Look, he, I would have liked it, and I'm sure everyone here, including Dakers himself, would have liked to get the stoppage. But I think that's eight valuable rounds. You know, we see a lot. He showed us what skill he has. Every sort of shot in his artillery, the, the footwork, like I said, was, was very impressive. Very good reactions for a big man, improving all the time, and I certainly believe that he's got a, a very good future in this division.